that looks like I wanted it to. And so I do have the entire uh, presentation up uh, on Google Slides so that you can uh, send it to your procurement departments, uh, to your friends, uh, include it in your Christmas cards, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, 40 years ago, I was a grad student at the University of Texas and uh, hanging on the back of my dorm room door was uh, not the ubiquitous poster of uh, Farrah Fawcett or Chris Atkins, uh, but this remarkable map of Chicago transit. Chicago was a place that I dreamed I might someday be able to live. And in fact, now do. Uh, so today I have a small firm that does a wide variety of map design. I wouldn't have it any other way, but I am proud to be the designer of the successors to that Chicago transit map. Back in the late 90s, I designed the Chicago Transit Authority's diagrammatic trains map, and more relevant to this talk, the system map that shows all trains and buses, a more complex undertaking as we will discuss. So system maps, transit maps go back to nearly the beginnings of electric public transport. Uh, you just take a street map and overlay on it the streetcar and rapid transit lines. This is a 1917 example from Chicago. And that's a useful approach for many cities. Philadelphia is perhaps the most venerable example of this approach, uh, having published for decades the uh, Street and Transit Guide to Philadelphia. And then that was uh, brought into to the illustrator era by a friend of mine in the late 90s or early aughts, I guess. In the early 80s, um, I was actually very influenced by the work of Reinick and Reinick on Bay Area transit maps. And I found this technique, uh, this is AC transit from around 1981. Um, this technique of dark bus lines on top of white streets reversed out of a neutral ground to be both practical and a useful piece of information design. And here's a similar modern example from Madrid. You got lots of information, but it's set up in a visual hierarchy uh, that makes it all accessible. This Berlin map uh, was part of a citywide rethinking of transport and mobility graphics that I think was guided by Eric Spiekermann. And it's just quite remarkable in my opinion for uh, making visible not only the U and S bahn lines, buses, tram stops, but every single street, uh, hundreds of landmarks, and even the house numbers for certain stretches of streets. So an incredible amount of information layered uh, on this map, uh, but in a very useful way where you can immediately find what it is that you're seeking. I've seen route maps displayed on uh, top of aerial photos, as you see there on the left. Uh, and uh, for European country buses, it can even be logical to use an actual topographic map that shows uh, shaded relief or contour lines as the base. However, the logic of using a cadastral map showing the real estate parcels isn't immediately apparent to me. Uh, apparently it was apparent to whoever made this map for Grants Pass, Oregon. Icons can be tricky business. Sometimes they're mere decoration that add little value to the user. Uh, but on the right, these stylized buildings in Copenhagen are carefully constructed to aid the, usual, the user's visual memory of places and thus to aid wayfinding. The biggest design problem in transit maps is that of coincident routes. We have several routes that run uh, on the very same street. And uh, sometimes God gives us cartographers glacial lakes to offer a design solution. So here, uh, Madison, Wisconsin, and uh, they got uh, uh, Monona and uh, Mendota to uh, call out, have the call outs of the uh, route numbers in. British practice for a long, long time uh, was to uh, show what routes run through a particular section of street. And of course, in the UK, that's usually the entire distance that the street has the same name. 
not as satisfactory is the plaza to plaza matching game uh, made more uh, thinkable by, because European buses often have stops that are almost this widely spaced. So quick, memorize the list of numbers at Leicester Square and then compare it to the dozen numbers at Liverpool State a Street Station and uh, <laughs> any matches, which bus would you take to get from one to the other? Even stranger was this approach used by Washington uh, back in the 80s and probably earlier, which told you not where the buses ran, <laughs> but only where they turned. So here is an innovative approach to coincident lines that was used in the 1990s by LA. Uh, they have interspersed dots of different colors to indicate a street that is hosting more than one bus route. Similarly, lines can be threaded, uh, braided together like uh, strands of yarn. And I recently uh, saw a, a transit diagram example of this from uh, another city. Now today, cartography in all fields is heavily reliant on the idea of beginning with highly precise geodata, uh, shape files in most cases, but that doesn't like being bent to our will uh, to make it readable. It can't easily be, dis be displaced or shifted to show multiple lines. And so these are shape files for the bus lines in Elgin. Uh, the far regions of the Chicago suburbs. And here's my redrawing of those lines to displace coincident lines to unravel the uh, overlapping junctions. In one case on the, uh, the downtown couplet, uh, I finally just had to resort to a note rather than uh, trying to show all of these bus routes that are uh, westbound on one street, eastbound on another, uh, side by side at the scale. We'll get back to scale in a couple of minutes. So this sort of work may prove to be the last stand of the thinking cartographers, those who carefully work out which line goes on top to avoid recrossings, the kind of cartographic license that's needed to clarify. So at the top is the old RTA map before I took it over. In the center are the raw shape files that I was given for the redesign. And at bottom, uh, my redrawing uh, reconfiguration of the Lake Cook Road corridor, which has a lot of rush hour shuttles service uh, going to uh, individual suburban office buildings. Downtown can be thought of as the height of the coincident routes problem. Uh, usually made even more complex by one-way street patterns. And here is some nice, uh, fairly recent work for Richmond, Virginia. When I checked last night, I noticed that they seem to have backed off of this approach a little bit, uh, no longer showing with the width of the line, the, uh, uh, the frequency or number of routes that travel down a certain street. But nonetheless, uh, much more effective than a lot of the downtown insets that you find on system maps. Some experiments uh, from the past, uh, here, uh, back in the 1970s, Richard Saul Werman tried small multiples for center city Philadelphia buses. So uh, the first thing you gotta know is which way you headed, uh, up, down, down uh, north, south, east, west. Sorry, I'm trying to uh, also keep one eye over here on the chat and see if, uh, if there's anything that I need to, uh, to address as we go. Uh, we, in, in the 1970s, Chicago had a downtown only transit guide that used a small map for every single route detailing how it went through and around downtown. And I use a similar small multiple technique on some of my tourist maps with four or five selected routes that are considered to be of special utility to visitors. 
we use small multiples in Chicago uh, to declutter the main map. And then there's a further list of routes that we don't show at all. Uh, we call those the conoscenti buses. If you or a coworker doesn't already know about them, uh, you'll not easily find them. Uh, but uh, we have a, uh, a lot of uh, this downtown rush hour only service uh, just shuttling between the suburban rail terminals and, and specific uh, downtown office buildings or clusters of them that uh, would just clutter up the map way too much for, uh, uh, it would scare people off. We'll talk more about that, uh, that tension in a, in a moment. Now, one small design feature that I think substantially aids route following is curved corners. Look at how they make the complex routings possible to follow, even where lines of the same color cross over, uh, over each other. Uh, this is something that Chicago has done for decades and I proudly continued it. Uh, I've spread it to some other system maps that I've created in other cities. And I noticed that it is nowadays fairly common practice uh, used by CHK America and Smart Maps and uh, the other few players, uh, nationwide uh, players in this business. Here's some uh, very nice recent work of, well, we're only now about five or six years ago by Kirill Nagoda and Cardinal Maps using the various tricks to make downtown Oklahoma City easier to understand. And eventually this sort of simplification crosses over into becoming diagrammatic. But the London Underground map and its progeny are a whole other talk. There's you know, an entire Twitter feed dedicated to them, uh, uh, a, a subreddit uh, dedicated to transit diagrams. They've become icons of information design, even symbols of the cities that some of us love enough to carry the diagram around uh, on the ultimate mobile device. Another design problem is the visual hierarchy created inadvertently when using different colors for what are essentially the exact same thing. In this example, it's a while before you even notice that pink number six bus line thre uh, threading off to the, to the east there at the top. It looks like the poor stepchild, less important than in your face red number two. So this is a problem of uh, color theory uh, and hierarchy that can uh, become a, a matter of uh, a design problem for the system map. Uh, New York City bus maps have colors that are carefully chosen to seem similar in intensity. Although for historic reasons, the subway lines are presented as mere background information on the borough by borough bus uh, network maps. Uh, we won't get into the reasons for that, but <laughs> they're not as relevant as they used to be. So before, uh, for my RTA Chicago redesign, I took pains to choose five colors that would have similar chroma or color intensity values, yet ones that would also allow the regional rail lines, the Metro network, uh, backbone of the system to dominate. And that relationship with rail lines can be tricky to achieve. Here's how Montreal made the Metro important back in the 1980s, back in the um, uh, uh, scribing and negative days uh, by making it impossibly thick so that it seems to span bus lines that are a quarter mile apart. Here's two more recent approaches also from Montreal uh, in uh, so, uh, in one, they use color shading that is underneath the bus information uh, or using color inside the station symbols only. And I think that's uh, kind of tricky uh, because that uh, doesn't maybe get the, give the rail network the prominence that it deserves in the visual hierarchy. Toronto was long a very admirable design but when they uh, adopted colors for the subway lines, it turned the hierarchy upside down. 
So this map, uh, this is from five or six years ago, uh, seems overly dominated by the red streetcar and bus lines because red uh, and other deep warm colors really come to the foreground. And so even though the yellow and green have been given black casings, they just don't appear as prominent as they really should. Uh, uh, Toronto has um, uh, done a little better with their current map uh, than this example from a few years back. And this was a problem with the colors that were used on the old RTA map. Uh, many of these routes only run four times a day but they dominate the map at the expense of the regional backbone, the commuter train system or suburban train system, which you see here is in gray and doesn't even match up with the station symbols that are in the dark blue. So I wanted to correct that uh, on the, the new map, uh, I'm using air quotes around new because it's now uh, seven years old, I guess, uh, putting the regional rail system front and center with the suburban buses as feeders that would be seen secondarily in the hierarchy. Now the visual hierarchy can be affected by tiny little things. For decades, Chicago had floated its route numbers next to the bus lines. That's what you see there on the left. And as an experiment uh, now a long time ago, uh, I tried putting them in shields that would sit right on the line and we were all amazed at the instant difference it made, flattening the hierarchy. Uh, so the bus route and its number are all on the same level. And I noticed that this is nowadays uh, the not only uh, commonplace and apparently considered the best practice, uh, virtually every system map around the country, even around the world uh, uses this same technique. Now, an unusual problem that we have in Chicago is that we have a three level street system in places with buses that run on the middle level. Uh, and so I used half opacity to try to indicate that in an easily understood way that wouldn't require a new and novel line style uh, explained in the legend. Uh, nowadays, I find myself pushing back against some of my clients who say, oh, well, that's no problem. Just invent a symbol and put it in the legend. And I have to point out to them that uh, people under the age of 30 uh, just don't have very much experience using maps that have legends, that Google Maps, Apple Maps, uh, here maps don't have a legend. Uh, everything that's on the map, you need to be able to un understand sort of from its context and where it occurs. Uh, because so few people will ever go to the corner where it says key or legend. Transit maps are often really complicated by rush hour only and express routes. And there's an eternal tension in ser uh, transit service planning between convenience and legibility, between services that are scheduled one seat rides for those riding it every day to work and simple service patterns that are easily grasped by new users. One way to handle the issue on a system map is by symbolizing frequent service more prominently than specialized routes. And this again is increasingly becoming the accepted uh, commonplace way to do system maps, the uh, a best practice. So on the left, um, Cincinnati's complex map of all its bus routes, and on the right, a frequency map of Cincinnati bus routes for which Nate Wessel uh, won the NASIS 2014 Student Award. Now, it's certainly not a new idea. Here is uh, exactly such a map that I drew in 1982 of frequent bus service in San Francisco. It helps you to understand the basic pattern. And if you're halfway in between routes, it helps you decide which street is likely to have a shorter wait for a bus. Nowadays, of course, that decision is also aided tremendously by the, uh, the apps like Transit App that tell you which one's going to get, uh, supposedly get, get there sooner. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, your uh, frequent service backbone is I think a vital thing to, to have as part of a system map if you can. 
Sometimes the frequent service network is called out as its own small map, as in Montreal. Another tricky problem we have in Chicago is that it is thought of as extremely orthographic and people expect straight lines for the streets running north, south and those running east, west and even straight diagonals. But that requires some artistic license to get everything to fit uh, without any of the stations ending up on the wrong side of the street. Uh, so you always have this complex balancing act between the amount of cartographic license that you can take and the danger that you'll send someone walking in the wrong direction. Um, on, a, on, a, <laughs> on a cold January afternoon, uh, like we are having in Chicago today. Now, as I, I pointed out, uh, the eventually simplification becomes abstraction as in this uh, recent map of Los Angeles system where the local geography supports this particular geometry. So I was somewhat more surprised to find a similar approach taken in Baltimore. Uh, but I think that there's an awful lot of promise in this uh, approach, in this technique. And it's one that uh, some of the folks at CHK America uh, have been trumpeting and uh, I think others around the world are following that uh, maybe we don't need to show all of the side streets, even the cul-de-sacs, uh, and then we can start uh, straightening out the, uh, the streets that the buses are running on. Uh, and by redrawing enough times, we can get something that is semi-schematic. Ever since I picked up this, uh, this German example in 1984, and that was of course before reunification, I've been intrigued by the possibility of the combination map and timetable. A decade ago, I got the chance to try it in Galesburg, Illinois, a small city system whose four bus lines run once an hour. And I used a similar approach for Bloomington Normal uh, Connect Transit System. The map tells you at what time after each hour the bus should come past a particular corner. I think there's a lot of promise uh, for these, especially in small city systems. Today, of course, we have the opportunity to do combinations of map and schedule in innovative new ways. And I've been investigating how best to put system maps on the web. So here's the extremely basic approach I developed in Chicago back in 1998, uh, dividing the big system map into logical sections and allowing easy navigation from one to another. But people increasingly expect slippy maps. By that, I mean the infinitely zoomable and panable maps that, uh, that we're all used to using uh, from Google or Apple or here, or even OpenStreetMap. Uh, even for maps like transit maps, uh, where that's not all that easy to, uh, to do it. So as a first step toward a multi-scale map, I made local maps that are double scale enlargements of the regional system map in Chicago. In places you'll notice that allows additional detail to be shown as I move from one to 150,000 at the top, showing the entire region on a convenient sheet of paper to 75,000 scale at the bottom uh, for the sub-regional maps that we put out uh, seven of, uh, highlighting specific portions of the RTA service area. And those even have, uh, sorry, my uh, other computer just uh, burped tonight. <laughs> so those even have um, uh, larger scale maps of one to 18,000 for congested areas. This is downtown Joliet. Uh, unfortunately, the client has shown little interest in, to, in developing these into a multi-scale online map. Now for years, I've greatly admired the multi-scale online uh, Seattle transit map. That's a labor of love by Oren Virienzi who works on Seattle Metro's official map for CHK America. This is a zoomable tile set, and for several years that looked like the best solution. But now even smartphones have no trouble zooming and panning PDFs 
which is a much easier workflow. What I don't think is a good approach is what I see some agencies doing, taking their bus route shape files and displaying them on top of a slippy map background. Because of the coincident line problem, that means you have to choose to see one line at a time. And the perverse result is that to figure out which bus you want, you have to first make a guess which line to turn on and then check to see if you guessed correctly. So it makes quite a game for the clueless visitor who doesn't know what streets or suburbs are east and which are west. In 2016, Jarrett Walker Associates and CHK America did an excellent uh, study for AC Transit looking at best practices and comparing three map uh, designs for usability. And I really recommend this. You see the, I gave it a, a tiny URL so that you could all uh, go and read this uh, PDF online. And eventually we'll figure out how to get system maps on the web. They'll be richer in content than paper maps ever could be. But despite our best efforts, there'll still be folks who have trouble figuring it out. I'll wind up with uh, some design resources for folks other than myself in, who are, uh, have this uh, great interest in transit maps. Uh, there's the study that I just mentioned. Uh, you can follow Cameron Booth's Twitter, uh, which is mostly transit diagrams rather than full system maps. And Carol Nagoda, who now works for Apple Maps doing a lot of their transit stuff, um, has a, a Tumblr uh, that he hasn't updated much, but there's some very interesting stuff that I found on there. And I'll conclude with the epigram that sums up my minimalist approach to cartographic design. That when you're making a map, it's best when you can think of nothing else to be, to, uh, to take away from it rather than nothing more that can be added. And I'll conclude with my contact information and see if I can get the chat window back and see if there's anything that people have been asking me that I have not answered. Anyway, turn hey, it Dennis. over for- <clears throat> yeah. This is Hayden, how are you? Thanks for Great. doing this, this is awesome. So I really appreciate you uh, doing this. My question is, you're talking about um, system maps and you know, like a full breadth system map. Is, is that something more to like live on a building at a transit hub. How, I guess, how does that work when it comes to like a mobile device? Like, how do you see that working when you're on the go and you want an in-depth transit map? Well, uh, of course, I'm an old ink on paper guy. So I think of a system map as something that you uh, have in your backpack and unfold to uh, study. But uh, of course, I recognize that nowadays we carry instead the PDF or uh, a zoomable slippy map on the smartphone. And of course, nowadays it can be integrated with the timetable information very easily to know uh, if I'm going there, which bus should I take or what, uh, when will the next option arrive for me? So, when I, when I, but I'm thinking of a system map as really the uh, marketing opportunity for the agency to show all the service that it runs and for as the resource that people use to consider how can I get to a new job that I am considering taking in this part of the city. 